Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, I was a bit of a bonehead today. If you follow my Wordle in a Minute videos, um, you're going to have to wait till tomorrow for yesterday's. Normally, that would be on today. Um, but I managed to mess up. Well, I, I travelled without having uploaded it. So I've done another little video today. And uh, you can see me solving a cryptic crossword quickly. And the New York Times' is connections, it's not a long video. What we have released on the channel today that is a long video is Simon's solve of an incredible puzzle by Totally Normal Cat, um, which has been on Patreon and is now on the main channel. Um, it was so popular on Patreon we thought we'd release it. So, um, oh, it's just extraordinary. Do have a look at that very long solve if you have the time. Now, talking about having the time, my normal recommendation when you're sending puzzles to us is keep the rule set short so that we can introduce people to it and so that we don't have to blow our brains understanding a whole set of rules. And most of the videos that I solve on the, or most of the puzzles I solve in videos on the channel do follow that. This one, not so much. This one is by Lil Gunga Jr. in, in their quest to get on the channel. Um, and it's complicated, but I've got the time today and just occasionally I like to dip into these things. This does look interesting and I want to give it a go. So there we go. Enough explanation. I will go through the rules at some length in a minute. Also on Patreon, as well as the occasional longer solve. And there, are, there is already one up by Simon um, at the moment. As well as that totally normal cat, you can see uh, the Cogito's roller coaster new Ricabi and Simon taking two and a half hours to solve that. Um, Patreon, the reward has finished now. You can't enter any more all the fun of the fair, but you can still solve the puzzles. Loads always going on on Patreon. Oh, my crossword video. My goodness, that's on Patreon today as well. That is the Times Monthly Club special. Quite the opposite from the two and a half minute quick cryptic solve. That is... Is it a full hour? I think it might be this time. I mean, it was a tough puzzle. I remember that. Um, that is a really vicious cryptic. Anyway, loads on Patreon. Check out our apps. Check out our merchandise. Check out Sven Sudoku Pad. Have a look at the catalogue of our puzzles by Vebby, which will tell you that Lil Gunga Jr. has not appeared before. And I'm going to go through the rules of their puzzle now, which is called, rather brilliantly, Pentomenophibian. Um, I like that. Okay, normal Sudoku rules apply. At least we're putting one to nine in every row, every column, and every three by three box. Draw three snakes in the grid by connecting the yellow, green, and blue dots to their respective partner. Each snake is an orthogonally connected set of cells that doesn't branch, doesn't touch itself even diagonally, and doesn't share cells with any other snake. Okay. Now the squares and circles. Digits in a grey square are even. Digits in a grey circle are odd. Cells containing a square or circle may not lie on any snake. And they indicate how many of the surrounding up to eight cells belong to a snake. So if those four cells were one snake, that was from another snake. This might contain a five. I guess. Divide each snake into contiguous groups of five cells i.e. pentominoes, such that every cell along each snake belongs to exactly one pentomino. No two pentominoes in the entire grid may be of identical shape. Now we get some special rules about what counts as an identical shape. Two pentominoes are considered an identical shape if they can be mapped into each other by pure rotation. For example, that shape and that shape. They're identical, but... If they require a reflection, they're not. So that shape is not, in this puzzle, identical to that shape. Okay, that is going to take some re-clarification as we go along, I imagine. If it matters, probably will. Um, so, or if they can't be mapped onto each other at all, of course they're different. I mean, if they're different pentomino letters, as it were. One of the, now here we go, there's more. One of the snake paths creates a Dutch whisper line where adjacent digits along the line must differ by at least four. One of them creates a palindrome where digits read the same in both directions. And one of them creates a Renban line where digits along the line create a set of consecutive digits without repeats 
in any order. The solver must determine which is which. Then we have a couple of black dots, digits separated by a black dot are in a one to two ratio, digits separated by a white dot are consecutive. Those are just some dots to help us. I mean, what a weird puzzle. Give it a try. I don't know how long this is gonna take. You can look at the length of the video, perhaps. I am gonna start now. Let's get cracking. Okay, well, green is not a Renban because it is too long to be a Renban. So it's either a palindrome. Oh, look, we're going to connect up green and it's going to come through here somewhere. What's going to happen to yellow? I am absolutely convinced that yellow is going to have to go around that top green to connect up. So yellow is insanely long. Yeah, there, yeah, it's going to have to. I mean, green has to connect up. Yellow must connect up around it. Neither, neither of those I'm here to tell you is the Ren band. So blue is the Ren band. Let's, let's stick a purple cell in those. Now, blue, well, yellow can't come in between the blues or blue will never connect up. So yellow is gonna have to kind of come round here. All of these are yellow. That's, I mean, it's just gotta be. I don't understand any other way that this could work. Blue is going to connect up and be a Renban. I could see that blue wasn't going to be a palindrome. Um, hurrah for me, because those two cells would have to be the same digit. Now we don't know which of green is Dutch Whisper and which is palind. Which of green and yellow is Dutch Whisper and which is palindrome? Wow, I mean this is bonkers. I think yellow is going to have to come up through this gap somehow. Green is gonna have to skirt round blue. Now it can't, well, could green skirt round this way? I guess it could do that. Then there's still space for yellow and blue to operate. But alternatively, green could do something like this and blue will be fine. Wow, I mean, this is mad, okay. What next? What next? We've had a thought, at least. Can you have Dutch Whisper going around there? Yes. Can you have Palindrome? Yes, as long as that or those aren't the middle of the line. As long as it's not round here, so there has to be a repeat digit. Now, okay, maybe let's... Th is it worth thinking about the, the grey... The, the squares and circles? They seem a bit... I guess a square on the perimeter can only be two or four because it's only looking at the five cells around it. So there are two or four cells surrounding this. Now, I think yellow has to come up through this region. It can't go, oh, yellow can't, of course, I'd forgotten that the snakes can't go through the gray cells, through the circles and squares. So yellow's gonna have to sneak in through here. That is going to be seeing all of those digits at least, so that has to become a four. Okay, that's good. Now, that can't be yellow or any other snake cell color. So the fourth digit on the snake, on this four, is going to be here. That can't be yellow because the snake would crash in, it would, it would touch itself, it's illegal. We mustn't allow our snakes to touch themselves. And once it's there, it's gonna be here. So now it's joined up. Okay, that is the start of this snake. Then it's gonna cross over and get up to here somehow. I was gonna say that this can't touch any other snake other than yellow, this gray cell. Because a snake would have to get through yellow, a green or purple snake would have to get through yellow to reach it. Um, so we've got, sorry, yellow could be Dutch Whisper or it could be Palindrome. Green is the same, that could be Dutch Whisper or Palindrome. 
The Dutch whisper could go through a black dot by being 8-4. I'm just considering that at the moment. Um, this is 1-3 or 5. 5 is very unlikely, and no snake can do that or it couldn't get out, so it's not 5. It's 1 or 3. These sort of count cells getting tied to the perimeter does restrict them quite neatly. Um, the green line. I kind of think it can't come through here. Because the purple line will never connect up then once the green line connects up. That is right. That must be right. Yeah, the green line does have to come down here. Okay, good. Now yellow has to keep going down there. I'm sorry, green may not be a great colour to be showing next to yellow. Um, because of colourblind issues. Let's, let's make it blue for now. Um, Eve, oh, well, that's a bit... Well, I'm, okay, I'll make it red. There we go. This red line, which connects the green dots. Now, yellow has got down to there. Yellow's not allowed through the square. So red has to bend here. Now, they're not going to be allowed through the square. So yellow, while well, it could, or through the squares or circles. So yellow could come through that gap or that gap. Red is going to come through that gap or that gap, I suppose. Gosh, I mean, yeah, these snakes, they're long. How could I prove that something is not a palindrome? Yellow is the one. It's going to have a lot of cells on it, isn't it? Oh! They're going to be... I've forgotten about the, the pentominoes for now. This is a pentominophibian. So red... Oh, well, we have a first pentomino here, that L shape. Um, I'm going to need to... to um, sort of colour these off in some way. So I'm going to use a blue outline for this one. There's one pentomino. Now, that wouldn't be allowed to be another pentomino. I can't remember the rule. <laughs> um, if they can be mapped, they are considered identical if they can be mapped by pure rotation. Ah, oh, that's not a pentomino, because that could be mapped by rotation. But we could have an I here, we could have that shape of L, we could have a V, but not that shape of L. So these are part of either, or, or there is either an I or a V, or the other L up here. I mean, that's complicated. Um, so, red, red, where are you going to go next? Okay, it's... Ooh. Lost my light. That's very odd. Why has that happened? There we go. There's some light back. Um, I don't know why that happened. That was very strange. It may go again, I suppose. Red. Red. No, I was... I just had a thought. Yes, it's about the number of cells red occupies. I, I don't think it can be different. Well, if red makes a sort of straight line, if it... Okay, I don't mean a straight line, but if it goes in the most efficient way possible, that's what Simon would call it, from here to here. How many cells is that? One, two, three, four, five. And what I mean by the most efficient way possible is it's only turning south and east. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it probably does that. That is That will be divisible by 5, so it can be divided into pentominoes. Oh, well, that's quite interesting for yellow. 
let's do a count on that. We've got five, again, we'll go with the maximum efficiency, six, seven, eight, 15, 19, 20, then 23, 26, 28. So yellow doesn't do the rest of its path with maximum efficiency. It's gonna to have to do something else. Now, if it went like that, that would add two cells to the maximally efficient path and get to 30. That is plausible. How could it be inefficient here? Like that, maybe? We need one inefficiency to get it up to 30. There may be alternatives, though. I suppose it could do that and be inefficient. But that's interesting. Yellow is going to have to be inefficient. Purple, I've just realized, of course, purple is a Renban, and yet its length is divisible by five. It can't be 10, because you couldn't get all the digits on that. So its length is five. Purple goes straight across. And it doesn't have a four on it, so it is the numbers five to nine. Ah, that is then a two, and this is a one, three pair. This is an odd digit on the black dot. This is only one option for each of those, two or six. And this is now not the Dutch whisper line. Red is not the Dutch whisper because three and six are only three apart. One and two are only, two apart, are only one apart. So red is the palindrome. I'm going to make red orange because that is more of a palindrome. Palindromes in our system are normally orange or gray. I'm gonna make yellow, green, no. Oh no, of course, orange is the Dutch whisper color, you numpty man. Okay, let's make the palindrome gray. I'm still gonna observe that it can't go through the squares and circles. Let's make the yellow orange, and that is the Dutch whisper line. Okay, okay. And purple is the Renban line, and it's five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that's good. Okay, this is actual. Ah, oh, I can't keep the light on. What is wrong with this? I'm really sorry. I don't know what's going on with that. Is it a faulty General Electric supply? Oh well, we'll we'll go as long as we can. Otherwise, you'll just have to. Uh hope you can see what remains of my face. I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, we've got Dutch, non-Dutch whispers. This is the palindrome in gray. Okay, the gray is the palindrome. Orange is the Dutch whispers. Wow, okay, at least we've identified the snakes. That feels like progress. So this then goes to a one or a three, then a two or a six. Hmm, I wish I knew which it was. If, I'm gonna have to remind myself about what a Dutch whisper can connect to. Four away, so that's six, seven, eight or nine, so is that. Now, with a Dutch whisper, it doesn't alternate high, low, always, because you can have a five on the line which can change that alternation. Five is neither high nor low and gets in between a one and a nine. Um, so unfortunately, we cannot just highlight alternate cells and say they're all low. I don't even know which is more helpful, the palindrome or the Dutch whisper at this point. Now, if that's a two, this orange has to go there. Then gray would have to go this way. Orange would come down. I don't think you could ever get, if gray came down to there, how do you ever get the inefficiency into orange? Oh, I suppose it could still do that. It's very odd, this concept of having to do the inefficiency somewhere. Now, if, that, if that's a two, that becomes a six and that becomes a three. And then I think we've got a sort of a start on the palindrome numbers. Um, no, I'm not gonna go nap on that. That may be me being a bit slow. 
Oh, goodness. Okay, the green cells are the same. I mean, the palindrome, just annoyingly, there's no idea what... It doesn't tell you anything about what the digits are on it. We need other things to tell us what the digits are. Oh, this is an even number, seeing... Seeing snake cells, isn't it? Oh, this has to see a snake cell. Ah, so orange does not go through this gap unless it did it with an inefficiency there. Well, I don't know. Ah, oh, it's very interesting. I don't know what that means. This can't be a one. I mean, this is not going to actually help, but I think it's a valid deduction. If that was a one, it could only be that if the snake touched at a corner. We can't have a snake going there. We can't have a snake doing that. That is a three. And therefore, the snake, it's not going to use those three. It's not, I can't keep the light on. I don't know. That's really weird and annoying. I've had this problem with lights and with... with um, bulbs before. I don't know. Sorry. Anyway. I'm trying to focus on this puzzle. Yeah, the snake can't go there in those cells. It can't touch that. It can't be just one there. They can't have separated digits. So the three that it touches are together, and it's not using that. It is using these two. It can't be the grey snake here, because then the orange would block it off. So they're definitely orange. Now the third cell it touches, I don't know, because I think it could go this way. But alternatively, it could go this way, Although then I'm feeling that the inefficiency will have to be up here. The inefficiency to make orange into a 30 length snake. That seems really weird, but, but it is unresolved at the moment. Ah, no, the snake can't go that way because this would be a six. It can't go up through that gap. Grey would be blocked. If it, Oh, it could get the inefficiency there. And this would be a, f a five. <laughs> and if it went that way, this would be a four. That wouldn't work either. Have I actually discovered that it does that? That would be a four if it came through here. Ah, oh, but then the grey could just... Flick that cell and this would be a five. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, or, actually, if this snake went down here, grey could come through there and this would be a seven. Oh, it feels really interesting. Right, grey has to hit this. Because... just wondering about that. Oh yes, that was because of the four. That is right. Okay. I was just thinking maybe we get the inefficiency there. No, 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 no. Grey has to hit this cell. Because it can't just stay at three because it's even. Now how much does grey hit it? It hits it by two or three cells, I think. No, by, by three or by five, it can't be five cells. It can't go all the way around because then it can't get out. It can, okay, can be one cell like that. It could even be one cell like that, although I think grey will then come to the wrong total. Let me just check that, seven, ten... 14, 18, 90. Yeah, it is the wrong total. Once you build in inefficiencies, you build them in in even numbers, which is a weird thing. So I think 
can it can it touch three of these cells? Well, it could by doing that. But again, that builds in inefficiencies and you're going to have to build in five inefficiencies, which is far too many to get to a, a number divisible by five for gray. Ah, oh, this is very hard. I'm trying to conclude that it only... Yeah, gray is efficient. Gray is if it... Oh, I can't keep the light on. That's so irritating. Anyway, here I am in the dark. What does it look like? It doesn't look too bad because of the sunlight. That's good, okay. Right, gray is efficient because otherwise you'd have to build in five inefficiencies and there just isn't the room to do that. That's about as inefficient as gray could be. And that is, that's the thing I just counted. That's 19. That's nowhere near. Okay, gray is efficient. And yet it touches this. Ah, it could touch it with those three. Or it could touch it with that one, I reckon. I don't see any other way it touches it with an odd number of cells. Orange can't touch it, definitely. Grey touches it with an odd number of cells, and it's either that one or those three, because grey remains efficient. So that's grey. I mean, it's, that's a very unsurprising grey cell, but... And grey is efficient. Right, how many cells... Where is the center of gray? One, two, three, four. This is going to be cell six. The center is going to be cell eight on a 15 cell line, which is either going to be here or here. It's going to be the center of gray. Right, the snake doesn't go down like that because those two would have to be the same. So it either goes straight along like that, that's one possible gray line, or down here and then curves. I can't quite see which is better. And if it, okay, let's look at this cell. If it did that, this is okay. This is gonna be a seven. If it goes straight along like that, this is gonna be a three. An orange, orange could still do this funky thing of going around there. No, it couldn't anymore because that would then become a six. Okay, so that is not the possible route for orange. Orange has to go through here. And orange is not going to get its inefficiency over here now. Oh, that three doesn't go on to here because of that three. So it goes up here next. I mean, you cannot possibly build in an inefficiency between those two. Oh, and also this is going to be two or four. So it either goes that way or it goes that way. Right, the inefficiency in orange has got to be here. And I don't think there are many options. Oh, it could go there, couldn't it? or it could go there. It has to, yeah, it mustn't just correct, connect those up dramatic. Anyway, we've got another shape down here that I hadn't really seen. We've got this, I never know whether this is an N pentomino or an S pentomino. Sorry, I cannot remember, that's, that's really stupid. Ah, and there's no inefficiency here, so whichever it is, that's cell one. That's cell four and that's cell five. So we do get this pentomino shape, which is allowed, but we've now used both versions of the L pentomino. Oh, and of course, the purple was our I pentomino. We can't have any others of those. Now, would this gray, would that be the same? No, that would be a, re a reflection of this, so it is allowed, or would it? Yes, it would, it would, it would. 
and V is allowed there. I think this might be pentomino time to try and figure out what we're doing with the pentominoes. So there are, oh no, I was gonna, whatever this shape is, is in just two rows. We need an inefficiency. And on this shape, well, it could be a V and make that a two, or it could be a Z and make that a four. If it was a V, that couldn't be a V. Oh, that's beautiful. If it was a V, then that would force gray to be a V in the same shape to begin. So it's not that. It's a Z. There we go. So that is another bit of the orange line done. An orange connects up here with an inefficiency. This we don't know. We don't know what gap it goes through or do we? Now I need to do the count again, don't I? Well, it either goes down there, this is a four or a six, or it goes across here. This one, if it goes down here, it goes round there, and this is a five. If it goes straight across, then it mustn't come here, and that's a three. This one needs gray to touch it. And if gray went straight across here, it wouldn't be allowed there. Oh no, hang on, hang on, hang on, it could go down here. Ah, and that is okay for this. This is going to be a, a 5 or a 7. Now, I don't think this can be a 3 anymore. If grey goes down here, that's a 5. If grey goes this way, we're up to 3, but grey has to come down and hit this. So it's got to come at least there. So that's always a 5. And now this is a 7, and now these are all grey. Oh my goodness, the way this works is extraordinary. Um, and now this is not going to be a six anymore. That is a four. This can't be five or seven. That's just Sudoku. I'd like to get to the Sudoku part of this puzzle. I suspect it's quite a way away still. Now that seven says gray can't come down here because it's odd. So gray gets to there. Now, let's think about the palindrome aspects of grey, perhaps. Before I get on to the, <laughs> the Dutch whisper aspects of orange. Um, grey, so we have this green cell, which isn't four. Then we have a one or a three in one of those. Then two or six in one of those. This is the centre of grey, isn't it? One, no, I said... The eighth cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, this is the center. Let's mark that with a little X, a little O. So these two are the same. These two are the same. I don't know how that helps anything. Oh, this digit is a four, so that's not in gray. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's where gray goes. Now I can do the shape. That's the other S or N shape. I'm sorry, I've forgotten. We've now got the V. That's our only allowed V. Because I think, or is, no, there is a rotation. Sorry, there's a reflection of V which would be allowed. And then this could be almost anything. We don't have any circles or squares to guide this. W is very plausible. Z is possible in two rotations. Uh, it couldn't be the V. So it doesn't go through there. Oh, that's interesting. It can't be the V because that would be the same as this shape. So it must go through here. And this cell on the palindrome is two or six, connecting to an odd digit that is now one, three, or five. Hmm. But could be on the snake or could not be on the snake. So those two are the same, those two are the same. I hope there's no rule about pentominoes have to contain different digits, because that ain't going to happen. Those two are the same. Then that's the same as one of those two. Those are the same. Then we have a one or a three in one of these cells. Okay. 
gradual progress eking out of little oh that has become a four that's not gradual that's obvious we've filled all the circles and squares and we need an inefficiency in the orange snake and we don't have many more palindrome shapes to actually complete we've got a gray one and two oranges i don't think orange can be a v there because that would be a rotation of this. So orange can't come to that cell or it would have to be a V. Okay, so that's orange. And that's not allowing a lot more space for the inefficiency, which can now be like that. Can it be anything else? No, that's it. That's the inefficiency. And we know the two remaining shapes in orange. They are a U pentomino and a W. OK. Um, so this can't be that W. That would be a rotation. Ah. It's not allowed to be that Z either because of this having existed. So it could be that Z. Can't come through here. Oh, it can't be either W because one's a rotation of the other. It's got to be this Z. No, not that Z. It's got to be this Z. Wow, and there's our last pentomino. And frankly, I could take away all the lines now because we've satisfied the rules for pentominoes. And we've completed the paths of the snakes. Now we just need to do some numbers. Right, this is the one or three on the other end of that snake here. This is now one, three or five. I mean, this doesn't seem like a lot of information. Those are joined by an effective white dot. So we're going to have to do Dutch whisper work. And I don't know how we're going to begin to do that. There are so many options. Right, we've got a low digit there. This is a higher one. Let's go five, six, seven, eight or nine. This one is either low or a nine, if that was a five. But the trouble is that then breaks out very quickly into... Oh, maybe we need to look at this box, which has a lot of orange digits in it. So this one is going to be high or a five. What I need to do is maybe work out a high-low, high-low pattern between those. If that's high, Highs go in all of... Ah, you see, that doesn't alternate all the way. So somewhere in this group, there is either one five changing the polarities of alternation, or three fives. Well, there can't be three fives in two rows. So there is exactly one five on this snake. And it is changing the polarity between one and nine. But where does it come? Well, it doesn't come in those two cells by Sudoku. Um, but after that, I haven't really got a clue. And it makes such a difference to, to trying to get at the numbers. Now, we've had one and three in this box. If we needed two low numbers, they would, if we didn't use five is what I'm kind of saying. Oh, this is very hard to do anything with. But let's keep trying to think about it because it's a very interesting puzzle. I haven't missed any rules, have I? I don't think so. No. No, I don't believe I have. So I'm going to have to work this out. And I mean, this part of the, the orange snake may be the place where we have to work it out or it may not I just don't know 
There's a four in one of those cells. That's very uninteresting information. Just a bit of Sudoku fact. Um, oh, come on. Try and work it out. What have we got? We, If that isn't where the five switch is, then this is... The trouble is the... F oh... Well, that is the only place for five in orange in this box. Okay, why am I claiming that? I'm claiming that because otherwise the five has to be surrounded by a nine and a one. Wherever the five does appear in orange, ah, no, I've, I've just thought of another wrinkle that is worth pointing out, is that there could be a second five in orange in this section. But that five wouldn't be changing polarity, so it would go nine, five, nine, so, or one, five, one, so the five would act as a, a low or a high digit. It wouldn't be a polarity changer. We do need a polarity change at once. And that must be a five, but that doesn't rule out a second five in orange. Okay, that's worth bearing in mind. I'm still trying to think about where five is. If five is in orange in box one, and that's not certain, but if it is doing the polarity switch, it has to be here because one and three are restricted to those cells. So one can't appear anywhere here. Although maybe that could be nine, that could be five, that could be one. No, that wouldn't be nine because you wouldn't have switched polarity at that point going round here. And that has to be low if you don't switch. Oh, this is monstrously difficult. Oh, look, I've got a three looking at that cell, which is therefore one or five. I mean, I really don't want to be missing anything clear from Sudoku, I have to say, because that's just wasting effort. Ah, oh, look, if that was a one-two pair, because of the putative black, or the hypothetical black dot, that would be a one as well. We'd have one-two-one. One. This can't be a one-two pair. It must be a five-six pair. Ah, palindrome. Palindrome stuff. So that's five-six-three. So this can be five, six, three. Right, we have a one here. That hasn't changed anything. But we also have three here. So if these were both, well, there are two low digits in this run. Even if you had five and nine here, there are two low digits. Those two low digits are two and four. This cell, which repeats in those two positions is two, seven, eight, or nine, but I think it can't be two because we need two low digits in this run of cells. Probably. If that's high, that's low. Yeah, we do. I think we do. I don't think that can be two. I think it has to be a high digit. That's not a five by Sudoku. So that is definitely high. So this is definitely low. Two or three there. Right, that is not a one. So this can't be a five. It is definitely high. Seven, eight or nine. This is now not three, four or six by Sudoku. Oh, it's not five either. So it's definitely low and it's definitely one or two. Then we start running into possible fives. And this is high or five. And then this is sort of all over the place because it's either low, but now it could be nine. One of these is a three, and that means one of these is a three on the palindrome. I'm gonna mark that to an extent. We've got a five in one of those cells. Now, if that is a five, it must be a polarity switcher because those two can't be the same digit. 
Yeah, when 5 acts as a non-polarity switcher, it has to be on the edge of a box. Couldn't be there, because those two see each other. And it couldn't be there. That could be a 5 not switching polarities between those two digits. Irritating. I'm doing a bit too much theory thinking at the moment. Um, but it's probably going to be necessary. That can't be a 5 by Sudoku now. And that can't be a 5. Um, so, 5 in this box now is definitely in orange, but it doesn't have to be the polarity switcher. Because that could... Oh, no, hang on. That can't be here because the 5 in purple is in one of those cells. And those can't be 5 because of that. So the 5 that is a polarity switcher is in box 1. It can't be there. And it can't be in either of these cells because it has to be surrounded by 5 and 9. So it is here. We have found the polarity switch. The only one in the top part of orange. So we can now say low digits there. This touches a 4, so it's definitely 8. That has become 7. That's become 6. Suddenly getting digits in the puzzle. Extraordinary. Right, the polarity continues. So... This is low. Let's put one, two, or three. This is high. Um, we have to allow five in as a non-polarity switch. That can't be seven. Sorry, six, eight, or nine. This is high, and it sees nine, eight, and seven. That is a six. This can't be three anymore. This can't be six anymore. This is low and is one or two. Six must be surrounded by... 1 and 2. That's an 8-9 pair. This is a 5-7 pair. That's 8 or 9. This is a 3-4 pair. I'm a bit surprised. I don't know the order, but I don't. That is low. This is high. 6, 8, 9 have gone. Now, oh, 5 it can't be on the column, so that's a 7. Um, this is low, and it's not 2 or 4, so it's 1 or 3. Now, I've got a 1, 2, 3, 4 teapot quadruple there. Everything else in the row is 6, 8, or 9. That's a 6, 8, 9 triple here. That's 1 or 5, and that's 1, 3, or 5. Gosh. I mean, that was a lot more progress than I was expecting to, to have been able to make any time soon. Now, there may be more to be done on the Whisper. Three can't be next to six, for instance. This one, two, three, four triple might be a bit more helpful than I'm realizing. But maybe not. Eight, four, eight is definitely legal there. Um, wow, okay, this can't be nine or six anymore. That's just Sudoku, so seven or eight there. This can't be seven. This can't be seven. What about these? They can't be eight, six, five, three, or four. They're from one, two, seven, or nine. There seems to be only one place for three in the box. That's just Sudoku that I hadn't done. That doesn't change either of these digits. Um, one of which is eight. Seven, three, six. Oh, come on. 3, 6, 5, 8. 1, 2, 4, 7, 9. So let's do that by Sudoku first and then consider the whisper stuff. 9, 8, or 5 there. It's not going to allow 7 here. But 9 would allow any of 4, 2, and 1, and 5 would allow 1 or 9 and 8. Yeah, I don't know. Ah, oh, that's hard. That's hard to know what to do there. The rest of column 1 is 2, 6, 7, or 8. Um, the middle one of which can't be 6 or 7. So 2 and 6 are in those cells, so 2 is not here. Um, so two's in that group. Okay, well, that's a surprise. 
7563. This is, well, that's an interesting pairing now. That can't be a 1 4 pair. So one of them is a 9. Okay, I'll take that. That's not a 9. These don't have a 9 in, and the 9 in the box, in fact, that's a 127 triple now. Oh, this is not working how I expect at all. Oh, there can't be an... Oh, no, there is an 8 there. And Well, I don't know. That's a 2. This is a 6, 7 pair. Sorry, I discovered there wasn't an 8 here. That doesn't mean there is an 8 there, unfortunately. Gosh. Oh, this can't be 6 or 8 now. That is 7 or 9. This can't be 5. So, it's low. And it's not 4. And it's not 3. That is 1 or 2. Now this annoyingly can be, quite likely, is a 5. Otherwise it's high. 5, 6, 7 or 8. And then we're a bit uncertain after that on the line. Because this is either low, 1 or 2. Oh, the palindrome. 7 on the end of the palindrome. And then 1, 2 or 7 here, which can't be a 7. So it is 1 or 2 there. And we've placed 7 in box 4. Wow, and that is the same as that and must be in one of these. So it's 1, 2, 6 or 8. And not 3. Uh, okay, that... Yeah, okay, I'm, I, I get to take 3 out of that cell as a candidate. It's still in one of those two and 3 is in one of those two. Therefore, which is very interesting because it makes that a 4. I should have met pencil marked that earlier, but it was across a box and it scared me and I didn't do it and now I regret it. But this is now clearing up the top quite nicely. Wow. Okay, that was a bit of go forward. Now, four... Okay, the whisper doesn't sort that out or that. But the one puts two on the palindrome there. That stops this being a two. And this also now can't be a one because of column six. That is six or eight. This digit goes in one of those. So it's one, three, five, or seven, and has to be three. Perfect. This is now not a three, surprisingly. Or well, unsurprisingly, I mean. This is the center, so it doesn't have a palindrome property to use. In fact, we've very nearly finished the palindrome, apart from that being six or eight. Excellent, excellent. Seven is sees the corner cell. Six requires one of these to be a six. That means one of these is a six. Now, I don't want to miss this trick this time. It doesn't solve it this time, I don't think. 8654, we've got a 3 to put in this row there. feel like that's the last 3 in the grid. It is. That's weird. Okay. Um, okay, whisper, whisper time again. Well, this is 1, 8 or 9 by Sudoku. And what's this by Sudoku? Two, six, eight, or nine. Now there must be some impossibilities between those. Or between that and this, there definitely are. This can't be six or eight, given the possibilities there. It's two or nine. Now what's going I mean that there's only that can't be five. I've got five in the corner. Yes. And it can't be seven. I've got seven in the other corner. Okay, this is now five in the box, and that's four. Three, four, five. One and seven aren't there, so we know where they go in box six. That can't be one now. That didn't change the Dutch whisper rules here. But that is eight or nine, and this is six, eight or nine. There's only one place for two, it seems, and that's there. And again, that doesn't change any of the whisper stuff. But that's fine. I mean, I feel like we're actually getting to a solution now. What a puzzle. I mean, I am glad I took this on. That is eight or nine. It can't be six, so that's six. 
And that finishes box six. And column nine is done as well. That's eight, that's nine. Most of the, might be able to finish these columns not quite in their entirety. Right, this is a two nine pair. Can't resolve that. That is now a six. So the palindrome is finished apart from its center. I can put one and seven there. This is now eight. I can't believe that eight nine pair is not finished off. This five seven pair is finished off. Okay, it's going to come down to this crazy whisper at the uh, at the bottom. Oh, what a puzzle. Five, six, three, seven, two. That is four or eight. Come on, just put in put in the candidates. Get to the end. Six, three, eight, seven, four. One, two, five, nine. Putting in all the candidates I can see. Oh, that's a naked nine. So all the candidates didn't amount to very much there. Right, that naked nine, although it's not necessarily helpful on its own in terms of clearing up the digits next to it, it seems to be doing quite a bit of Sudoku work. That's nine. There's a one four pair here, so this center is five or eight. That can't be two anymore. This is a two four pair that are resolved, and that is good because it doesn't break the whisper rules. 8 there, we get a 1 here. Oh, look what we're going to get. We're going to get a late, late parity switch on the whisper line. Oh, look, we first of all have a 5 not doing a polarity switch. Then we have a 5 here that is doing a polarity switch. I mean, it didn't matter so much as it did at the top of the grid. I don't know. If there are easier steps... Oh, no, I don't get a tick. Oh, I have not filled in the center of the palindrome. Please tell me I'm right, puzzle. Yes, that is a really good puzzle. Great fun there. Pentomino Fibian by Lil Gunga Jr. I mean, it's complicated. And that Pentomino rule, I don't recommend that version of the Pentomino rule because it needs so much explaining. But it was lovely in this. Well, I mean, it contributed and, and the puzzle was lovely. What an intriguing, snaky puzzle. 50 minutes to solve, but an absolute pleasure. Glad I had the time. Glad you can still see my face. I will see you again tomorrow. Um, bye for now.